right, man. All right, I say we pull the trigger on this thing. Hold up. A Fritzy 248 minute. One of the, uh, the newly crowned partners of the community doing so much, so well out here, Fritzy. Good morning to you, brother. You look handsome, man. And thank you for, uh, for taking some time with us here, bro. My pleasure, brother. My pleasure. Dude, so, all right. Recently made partner. We talk the we start these talks in the, in like a lot of different ways. Like sometimes we go like chronologically, like with the rowdy one, we were doing a program with the, you know, we can go like order of importance. But I I remember, you know, and it's not new to you anymore, but I remember how excited I was to reach the partner milestone. A good question that I keep being asked is like, what what is uh what's the feel? Now, has it changed the channel for the better? Is it changing the direction of what you had been doing into what you are doing? And this is like, you know, this is just like a, the, our springboard here because there is way, way, way more to talk about. But I think people want to know about the journey because one of the impressive things that you do, and there's so much more that we're going to learn about over the next hour or so here, uh, was making this happen for yourself so convincingly so quickly so you must be so proud bro what do you think about your channel uh, achieving partnership i mean obviously uh, it's a it's a heck of an accomplishment you know I, it, there's two there's two sides of me one knows that i didn't do any of this stuff alone right mm -hmm. i mean at the end of the day when you when you start when i started streaming you probably won't remember this but every interaction that i have it's just the way my brain works i remember i remember one of the very first times I booted up and uh, uh, I was rolling through, I was averaging three or four viewers. It wasn't mm -hmm. much, uh, very minimal chatter, obviously. It's to be expected right now. I was around the community a long time prior as a viewer to being a streamer. And I remember when I hit affiliate and somebody gifted you a sub in my channel and you popped in and it was a weird feeling because at that moment you were already partnered obviously i believe you had you had uh it, you weren't that far removed from having received your partnership and sure I yeah it like, couldn't have been no and i was like this famous guy's in my chat you know, this, this is crazy. um so to fast forward you know five months is what it took me from from you know the the first day that i booted up to where i'm at now remarkable was, was insane you know i mean the the amount of support i mean you, you've had to trek the road so the amount of support that you have to receive in order to average 75 which i believe and we can talk about this i don't think that's the real average right i think the real average is is probably over 100. sure yeah um, agreed it's it's it, i mean i only stream two hours if my if my group of friends family my my viewers don't show up in droves in the first 20 minutes i'm fighting the back end of that stream no matter if i have 130 people in the chat or not right so yeah it, yeah the game of know. averages is a uh, is a tough one uh is a tough one to manage i know i keep alluding to and it you know kept comes up in a lot of these talks that i thought having to keep the side eye was making me uh, worse. I thought that was making me, a, you know, a worse streamer. I was less concerned with who was there and more concerned with, you know, who wasn't there or who could be there. Uh, and and I know, you know, that was tough for me. Do you think the was it a relief for you? Do you think the show quality is, has gone up since? Well, I'm 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 not going to say I'm built different, but my, I'm wired differently. Uh, mm -hmm. I never. My goal was never to achieve partnership, if you may. It was bigger than that. You know, my 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 hopes uh, were are bigger than that. It was kind of something that I needed to hit in order to get to the next step. And kind of throughout right. my life, I've I've made sure to take each step as they come. You know, I got to attack a goal, set a goal, attack a goal, achieve that goal, and then reset the bar. And that's you know, I think generally speaking in life, if you're not resetting your bar you know on a regular basis you're probably doing something wrong you know i i think there's a there's a fine difference um uh, you know a lot of the times you hear i have dreams of doing this well dreamers in, in for me dreaming is a lazy way of not doing right that's a way that i'm going to sit there and think about it and i'll be yeah, on my couch and i'll procrastinate and I'll, I'll have all these ambitions and thoughts and wants and you know but the, the odd part about life is that I've learned is that to get those things, you just get your ass up and do it. 
Mm -hmm. There's just, there's really no middle ground there. And this has become, this really, that attitude from my, not, you know, from our personal conversations, and I'm going to let, you know, you take some of this stuff for a walk, has become a hallmark of you as a human being. So now we might spin a little bit chronologically. You were a great athlete, were you not? Yes. Yeah. And this I might have been uh, kind of one of the first instances of you, of at least in your story, you know, as well as I know you, um, of of setting a bar to knock something down. So you, so, so. Tell me. Yeah. So I was a, uh, I mean, I, high school sports, if anybody who's really been deep into the sports world knows that, you know, unless you're in Texas playing football, high school sports really doesn't hold much. Uh, it Well, football does a little bit more than other sports, but baseball, the sport that I was in is, is completely a travel sport. Mm -hmm. I was a four-year starter in baseball at my high school. I was a four-year starter as uh, uh, a point guard in basketball. And, uh, I was a heavily rec uh, recruited baseball prospect. Um, I, I was a closing pitcher, and I, but more importantly, I was a first baseman. And uh, yeah, I mean, I the amount of time that I spent, you know, I remember my parents uh, replacing three garage doors growing up because I wouldn't stop throwing tennis balls off the garage door. <laughs> I mean, it's just it was it's the way that I am. I have a, I have an issue sitting still. Uh, I'm probably ADHD, and when I get something in my head that I want to achieve, I, I just don't really accept no for an answer. Right. So you were very successful in baseball. I wonder how much it because this this was uh, an incredible uh, story to me in the in what it did to your outlook afterwards. I want to get to I know an important part of how you operate uh, is in the service of others, and that and I and I like really I want to spend some time there. But as much or of course or as as little uh, as you would like to share about coming upon your uh, drive to serve others because I know that um, you know on just a higher level you you walked a path that that wasn't a foregone conclusion and you kind of had to arrive at this and I was wondering if you want might want to share some of that with us sure I mean I you know interrupt whenever you may or whenever you want but no ramble go you know so when I uh, uh, when I was being recruited um, you know I used basketball as a uh, method to stay in shape I mean I was a good basketball player I was recruited d2 for basketball but I never had a future uh, in basketball you know that wasn't my sport even though I, I loved playing it but uh, I had an unfortunate circumstance uh, you know on the basketball court uh, we were ranked fairly high in the state at the time mm -hmm. and um, Coach was very mad at us going into uh, halftime. He said he was done coaching the team. And I was a very ignorant, uh, pompous, I'm better than every single person that there is. And, you know, that's just how I was wired at that time in my life. And he called it, we, we had busted the lead down from 20 to five. And I was about to inball, uh, inbound the ball. I think it was five. We might have even had it tied up at the time. You know, I tell this story two ways sometimes because it's been 20 years. But sure, yeah. um, you, we, I went to inbound the ball and I saw every single one of our, you know, high school bench warmers, you know, sitting there to check in. And the crowd was silent because we were at the away, the away gym and they knew what was going on. They knew that they were pulling out the starters. And the the gym was silent and i said are you serious and the coach heard me and he was a very old school strict coach and as i ran to the end of the bench he grabbed me by the shirt and i you know i was pissed he was bigger than me i'm six five at the time six five two twenty in great shape yeah. and he was you know he was six foot seven and he was in great shape himself and after the game we went you know went uh, to the locker room and I told him you ever touch me again there's going to be a problem mm -hmm. and uh, he somewhat acknowledged that and when we got on the bus my friends as kids do were hyping me up and jazzing me up and here I am this loud mouth just you know let's call it what it is shitty kid just sure. a dick we're and all shitty God. we're all shitty at that age like you kind of yeah. like have to be you know what I mean yeah. like too many chemicals like it's too much going on you're growing yeah. too much like bones fucking hurt and stuff and but yeah. but yeah so yeah we're angry shitty kid and and I imagine you'd have a reaction to that getting goaded I did we were at the back of the bus I'm, you know we're yelling back and forth and jazz and I was the captain of the team I was a four-year captain in both sports as well and that's, uh, that's fucking nuts just yeah. for a second there you were a four-year captain in both of those sports yes yeah, yeah, that's nuts. I don't actually know if I've ever heard of that. So what yeah. did you do on the bus? 
So the coach came back. He grabbed me by the shirt. He picked me up Bang. and, uh, you know, yanked me. You know, he grabbed me like this by the collar and pulled me forward. Bang. And I, I popped him in the face. And uh, from that moment, you know, the, the police and I'll, I'm going to just share it because it's it's I have no shame in, in how I got to where I am today. As much or as little as you'd like, of course. And uh, I got pulled off the bus. There was no, you know, I didn't get charged for anything. The, you know, the coach had his own personal situation that ended up happening as a result of it. But as a re uh, result of my actions that day, uh, I was considered a toxic, um, undraftable at the time. The Braves had been scouting me for quite some time. I was probably going to be sitting in that third round area and uh, everything disappeared. My whole life that I worked just countless time and hours and everything that i knew your was, whole life your whole life yeah and i'm eight and i'm 18 at the time so right. i have no other plans i'm a right. i'm a 2.0 student because i'm just doing the bare minimum because this was it. I, I, you know you know the deal i'm you yeah. played sports and just right. it, kicking the tires down the street when it comes to that so i had no college prospects you know initially and uh I turned and, and and just started pissing my life away in any single way that I possibly could at the time. Yeah. Uh, whether it be drinking and partying and hanging and just just being a even more toxic. It's like at that time, you look back on it and you think, I doubled down. I yeah, doubled right. down on what got me to where I was. Right. Um, at, at 24, you know, when I had kind of failed that, I had gone to school. I became a sound engineer. Um, mm -hmm. I went and got my associate recording engineer i got my producer um and then i got a uh, mastering engineer which is like an associate's degree so three different associate's degrees okay uh, i started making music as a producer what kind and, of music were you making uh did mostly hip-hop just because of the cost of setup uh rap okay. music old school i'll share with you sometime i, I played sure, yeah. some on the channel before cool um yeah oh cool. uh, hold up yeah. I accidentally unmuted you. So I, I had a lot of success uh, actually doing that. And um, I started to dive into, you know, theories and kind of became somewhat introverted for a period of time as a result of it and spent a lot of time uh, in depression, you know? A so lot this is now post-college, this was now post-college uh, uh, with... Okay, during college, you're you're working now and kind of also sorting it out mentally. You, you are yeah. also dealing with depression at this point? Yep. Yep. I okay. was dealing with heavy depression. And when okay. I say, you know, depression started right at the onset of the loss of baseball. I wasn't able to identify it at that age. Right. Uh, but it was deep. I mean, it was right. it was very deep depression, uh, right. sometimes debilitating. Yeah. Uh, so at that point, I started to go see a therapist. I know we've talked about this and start mm -hmm. to try to work through some of the things. And uh, at 24, and I won't forget it, and I shared this with you the other day. You know, my therapist looked at me and said, you know, if you were to spend less time thinking about yourself and start spending more time on how you can be of service to others, you might see a big change in your life. And I did. And I did. And it was it's been it's been that way ever since. I mean, I I every day when could because I'm prone to depression. Right. I mean, once sure. you once you've been depressed before, there's you're always going to be, you know, it's right Somewhat. there. Yeah, it's never too far off. Yep, yep, yep. And and my brain is built that way. So uh, typically, it's overthinkers, overanalyzers, um, people that sit in their own mind and allow things to fester and grow. And when I have these things happen to me now, it's so reactionary at this point, at thirty six years old, to say, "Okay, I'm all about me right now." I have got to go figure out what I can do for somebody else. It can be the simplest thing, but anything that I can do that's going to make me be of service to others is ultimately going to also make me feel good about myself. And luckily, it makes somebody else, you know, have a, a better or uh, uh, more pleasant experience in whatever is going on. So I try to, uh, I, I try to make sure that when I see somebody in distress, when when I see something going awry that I put myself in there in a helpful capacity because it's not just for them. You know, mental health is important. It's for me. You know what I mean? It's I'm doing a lot of this for me. And right. then Fen will get this. 
I'll, uh, because the bra- way my brain works, it's, am I still selfish? Is this a selfish activity? Because I'm doing some of this for me, right? Because it you feels know? good still. Yeah, and so I wrestled with that for about four or five years to eventually get to the spot that I am now where, um, you know, I, uh, uh, I'll, I'll let me rewind just, just a slight bit here. So mm-hmm. after I got done with sound engineering school and, and was successful, I mean, I was very successful doing this. I made a very good living. I ran a company called Off the Fritz Productions for 10 years. Um, it's why my, my Xbox tag is Off the Fritz, ironically. Yeah, I noticed. Yep. Um, and we were very successful as mastering engineers it, You know, locally. Uh, my brother and myself worked in uh, the Bass Brothers studio, which is where Eminem records in, in uh, Michigan here. Yeah. And, um, you know, we did that as well as, you know, we worked with OB Trice. We worked with, you know, a lot of people uh, Dope. Yeah, sick. Out there doing things as mastering engineers. When I met my wife, the lifestyle and my wife in general, and she, you know, when she became pregnant, it just really wasn't the life, you know, to raise children around. It, right. it wasn't the client. Yep. Clientele wasn't kosher in, yeah. in every regard. And, um, I decided that, uh, you know, with her, I, I couldn't say enough about my wife and how she's, you know, my better half, yeah. but with her, you know, belief in me, I decided, all right, I'm going to do another career. Right. So I, now I've had baseball, which I, I pissed down the toilet, uh, music, which has been wildly successful for me, but right. doesn't, isn't conducive to a family life. So now I'm starting again at scratch. So I went back to school to get another degree and uh, I ended up getting one in environmental systems technology and I got offered a position at a property restoration company. So I took it. I waited around in sewage and shit and crawled in attics and did everything that I had to do. I worked. Typically, I was working around 80 hours to 90 hours a week. I anytime they wanted somebody on call, I was pick me, pick me, pick me. Um, I did everything that I could to make sure that they knew that I was going to put in more than anybody else was going to put into this, right? Yeah. That at the end of the day, I, I might be outskilled. There might be a skill gap, but I will make up for it in work ethic. And mm-hmm. so I was successful in that. I got moved from the field, from cleaning up sewage to an office estimator project manager position in less than a year, uh, which doesn't happen you know yeah. and i went to school again to learn how to write and run these jobs i mean at this point i'm not even familiar with construction my dad's a finished carpenter uh uh not by trade but you know like in the basement finished carpenter he did great work but mm-hmm. that's all i knew about construction so i dove back into the books and started reading and figured you know everything out and and started pushing down that path well another year later I, uh, one of the guys that used to run our environmental department at the company decided he was going to retire. So I was offered the opportunity to learn about mold, asbestos, pathogens, you know, and, and jump into the environmental sphere. Uh, I jumped at the opportunity and I started studying on that and went back to school for that and versed myself in that all on my own time while still doing the job. And, um, Fast forward five years later and I run the show, you know, so uh, just just showing up every day, man, and just never accepting no for an answer and trying to be of service. And in this case, the service to others plays out even in your job site. Right. So Mm -hmm. when when I go into the office, I see let's just say I'm going to use a random name, not a real employee, but Paul, he looks down. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I can tell we've been working Paul too hard. I take my time out to take Paul, you know, sit him down. We have lunch together. We hang out. I talk to him on the phone for two hours. Whatever the hell I can do that will be beneficial for me, but also beneficial for him at the end of the day where, you know, he can feel like, hey, you know, the guy in charge sat me down. He cares about me. He, you know, he he wants me to do well. He's there for me Mm -hmm. because people don't know just like now we're going to press the whole rewind fan. Like when you came into my chat, you had no idea the impact that you may have had in that moment, right? But for me, that was a moment of, it can be done, okay? And so I think about all these things as I move throughout my day, and it's why you might see me in so many chats, hanging out with people, because 
I know what that did for me. Mm -hmm. And I know what my responsibility is, what was given so freely to me by people like you, Buffalo K, um, uh, Zan, you know, guys that I used to rock with coming in and saying hello to me. They not, they didn't. It's not like they were hanging out. Just right. popping in and saying hello was plenty enough to make me feel like a million bucks. And uh, I try to do as much of that as I possibly can because of the feeling that it gave me. And in the larger picture, is this mastery of interpersonal communication, do you think the most important underlying and uniting factor to your successes? Because this story is one of you not in, in some sometimes being forced back to the drawing board and other times taking up the drawing board willingly, but like it over and over again, returning, returning to the board and finding success in the new space quickly and when you know one of you know one of the first things you talked about right afterwards is taking special note of people uh, uh paying attention in ways that maybe you're not expected to be paying attention and, and taking a little bit of extra care with your interpersonal relationships obviously you know also being first one in last one out type of attitude i'm sure is going to be helpful as well do you think your mastery of communicating with people and uniting with people has been the most successful force for you is it showing up early and leaving late is it persistence and just being willing to work harder what's like what's the crowning jewel here i know what i think it is for you but i'm curious what you think i think i think that ultimately at the end of the day the uh, quick answer is it's communication mm -hmm. and the reason behind it is this the world is composed of just people that's mm -hmm. it it's it's just it's it's men and women it's it's just people and at the end of the day when when you wake up in the morning you're going to be dealing almost exclusively with people and if right. you can if you can dial in those relationships and you can spend your time putting yourself in the other guy's shoes which is i think the most underused aspect that we have every person has it they have the ability to be compassionate to be understanding to put themselves out there to say you know how is how does fen feel this morning what you know why was the reaction this way Right. Being in tune with that is is as much about being in tune with yourself as it is with being in tune with others. And I think that we often forget and we look at ourselves as this objective, right? That we're polishing off the trophy. Right. Each individual is polishing off their trophy. Where are they going to go and what are they going to do? And they often forget the steps that led there, the people that got them there, the, the relationships that were forged. And I think my my being tuned into all of those items on a daily and minute by the minute basis mm -hmm. is what ultimately has led to my success. Of course, hanging out and 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 being there more is is a plus. A, a body in the room is always better than a body on the couch, right? Right. So there's that. But if you combine all of those things, then I think ultimately, you know, that's what's led to my success. But the simple answer, like I said, is communication. I mean, if you're if you can dial that in and you can really sit in the other guy's shoes, uh, you know, even down to if I may elaborate, if you're good with it, but say say you were to come at me, Fed, right? And you mm -hmm. yell at me. Mm -hmm. And there's a situation. So many people, their thoughts are are to defend themselves. Right. Fight right? back. Yeah. And it's wrong because it's to not understand the emotional spectrum, right? You're mad, which most likely came from another emotion, right? From being right. let down, hurt from people, feeling hurt people. from Yeah. So to really dial into how you got, how the other person got to that emotion is so critical. And I, I just feel like there's so many people you know, there's an instance, and I, I don't think you'll mind this, uh, me saying this, so I'm going to say it, and you can stop me if I'm wrong. But Let it rip. There was, there was a time where I had a completely different notion about what potentially my relationship with Fendler would look like. Right. Right? That's, there yeah. was, I had, I had a certain perception, and when I found out I was wrong, and I was called out on it, okay? Fen called me right out, and 
I think he can verify what my response was. It was, I made the wrong decision. I, I was led astray and I took full responsibility for an, an action that I typically would never, I'm not going to say never because I did it then. It happens. I'm human. I'm never going to be perfect at this. I can strive for it and I can work at it, but I'll never be perfect at it. But I never made excuses for myself. I never will make excuses for myself. When, when I did something, I will man up to it. I will explain to where I got to now and where I think that that relationship is gone or slash is. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the, the person on the other side, in this case, Fen, can, can have a real conversation with himself about where he feels like things actually are, right? right? He's not, you're not in defense mode because right. you're actually getting an opportunity to say, oh, he's not going to sit here and, and bullshit me or, or excuse me, I, I don't, you're going to have to. No, let me. it rip. No, you're good. Yeah. It, it's not, I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what happened. And, and, and that's just how it goes. Sometimes life isn't a perfect orchestra. You know, sometimes the violin goes off key. And right. when that happens, it's our responsibility as humans to step up and say, yeah, you know, I played the string wrong. That, that was, that's my apologies for that. You know, I owe you an apology. What, what can I do to make up for that? Right. And consistently, like, you know, in, in uh, when if I'm coaching my my kids, my youth football kids, I'll tell them a mistake is re a mistake really only is if you've done it twice, because any one time, you know, you, you get the clearance for. But the it, it's the learning from the things that is indicative of, you know, the, the, the direction of the person. And that's why, you know, we, when we clean that up, that's been it's been great ever since. You know what I mean? Dev, man, thank you for the huge raid, guys. I appreciate uh, appreciate you popping in. Hopefully, you're enjoying the show. Big Fritzy in the channel, of course. This man bears no introduction. So, okay, recurring theme that it seems like is happening on accident is is, uh, is rebounding from from unexpected circumstances, and it, you know, just based on where we're at uh, in the world, it's been a recurring question that I that I keep asking because it looked and felt a little bit different for all of us, a, a lot, and a lot of it is a story of a, a comeback story when COVID hit what did this do to your day-to-day -day life did it impact you did it bring you closer to your family was it a financially stressful time did it change your priorities what did the COVID world uh mean in the Fritzy household well I was one of those emergency workers because mm -hmm. of the nature of my work I never got to spend a single day uh well I I spent two weeks at home while and worked from home while they kind of figured out what the heck was going on right, right? Yeah. but once it was determined that emergency workers could work i was out there i never spent time at home i was never able to hide i was so out work wise didn't mean much to you were you was so, it were you nervous when you when you were out here or is this i'm sure you know being in and out of the household feels a little different yeah so i mean keep in mind what my background is and what i do you know my my specialty is environmental work right. so dealing with with uh, microbes and pathogens is made it a little bit easier for me right just because it was i knew what i needed to do i knew how to coach my family into what they needed to do to make sure that they kept themselves safe sure. the real issue was you know and we won't get too deep into it but sure. watching others you know, uh, try to mitigate the situation. Uh, it's almost one of those times where you know too much. You right, know, right, right. It, it's like it, the shit sucks. Guy, yeah, the old guy who's picking his wedgie out, and you're like, you know, there's fecal matter on your hands. Right? Yeah, right, right, you right. Know? right. <laughs> I see, I see too much. You know, that even from playing with the mask, you know, proper mask removal is from the ear. You know, right. a disposable mask is not meant to be worn twice. Once right. you've worn it once whatever's on the front will migrate its way to the inside once exposed to the outside air. I mean, just simple, in my world, simple containment breaches mm -hmm. that are happening all the, all time. the time. Yes. And yeah. So, you know, one thing I got, I ended up with it. One thing that, uh, that I'll say is it was, you know, I, it wasn't crazy for me other than one night I woke up with a heartbeat of 130 and I, I had that throughout the night, which was pretty terrifying. Quite yeah, honestly. scary. Yeah, I mean, I, you being you know in the in the fitness world can understand that that resting one thirty heartbeat is. We're, I mean, one, once we're one fifty, we're talking dangerous, dangerous stuff here. Yeah, right. You're running. You're running at that yeah. point for sure. Well, and then I'm not moving. Exactly. So, right. So your body's working that hard. Something is very much yeah. uh, askew here. Something's wrong. 
Yep. And then if I start moving, what are the consequences and how, how much does that raise the heart rate? So, you know, I, I sat and I laid and I, thankfully it came as a wave. It was about five, six hours. And mm -hmm. after that, uh, I had some chest issues, but nothing, you know, out of the ordinary. Uh, if I had been a little smarter initially, I probably would have stopped using my vaporizer and things would have gotten better quicker. But Man, uh, my lungs, that had some staying power, though. The taste, it yeah. was uh, I had it in uh, December of 2019, and the taste sucked, but I, uh, legal where I live and I'm prescribed, you know, I, I use a uh, smoke weed, and uh, I could not for weeks after I felt like the rest of the way better, man, it was it was really impactful on my whole yeah. system. And usually I had like get sick like around then anyway. So I didn't take any like particular note until afterwards. And then the the uh, the taste symptom and like, you know, some of this, some more of this uh, came out. But um, man, that was like one of the sickest I've ever been. I think that that I <laughs> that shit was fucking terrible. It, it was. But, you know, like I think the biggest thing about COVID for me was the sense of being grateful, you know, right. because while all this turmoil is going on and so many people are struggling with so many aspects of their life, here mm -hmm. I am gainfully employed, just moving the needle. I mean, business was booming yeah. for us. I mean, yeah. We're cleaning out buildings. We're decontaminating. I mean, it was it was um, it was a very odd situation between what mentally is OK and not OK, if that makes sense to you, because. We're making money, you know, hand over fist, but people are passing away, you know? And so did I'm that occupy there. any did that occupy any mental real estate for you? Yeah. Kind of the the paradox of man, uh, business is booming right here, but but at what cost? Like because I know, you know, I know you're a very considerate guy and you're going to think about things like that. Did you like take any of that home with you? A lot of it. Yeah, yeah I bet. Yeah, I bet. It was, it, it's tough sometimes, man. And, and you know, I would uh, not my family, but my wife's family had a loss from COVID, and Sorry, uh, I was actively seeing it, you know, yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis here. Michigan was obviously pretty, uh, hit pretty hard, as you know where you were was as well. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it, it's another life lesson, though, Fent. It, it's yeah. one of those times where, you know, the, the, furthest, uh, the further down you go, I'm of a believer that that means the further up you can go, right? And it's never about our victories. The, the, odd, the odd part about life is when we win at something, we change nothing, Yeah. right? Because the script's been written. We know how to win. We just mm -hmm. won. But when we lose, that's when we can, that's when we grow. That's when we have the opportunity to figure out, okay, this happened here. How how can I upgrade this? How do I how do I seal that gap, mm -hmm. right? And make that go away without losing something else in the mix. Right. And how do I grow from these experiences because you don't grow when you win. You just you in life you just don't grow when you win. You might get cocky, you might get more brazen, you might be brash, but you will not grow. And there are so many microcosms for life, like just just like this in sports and you know, in my personal experience in football, it's like you go to the film, the film of a win of a 40 to nothing win will be much shorter than the film of a of a seven point loss for example right there is going to be so much more for you to learn from from the l's that you take and just be based on the you know the parts of your life story that you've shared with us here it sounded like the the incident with you know the coach in high school was a turning point that was like an l that you learned from can you think of any other l's and and, and if you don't want to revisit like you know high level like not without specifics that you learned the most from, from and thus became into a, you know, turned into dubs for you? Yeah, there's, I, I would say two specific things that I think of on a regular basis. I was, um, I was the youngest of a family of four mm -hmm. and, you know, my brother was fiercely competitive. I mean, just absolutely just brutal. Mm -hmm. And I know everybody says that about their brother, but, and I won't share it here, sure. but to some very like deeply, you know, uniquely uh, savage. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, there was there was some behavior in there that you know was not kosher. Let's just sure. put it that way. That right. that you know, from a physical standpoint. Um, and I think that I was able to take that. I remember very specifically uh, when I was seventeen years old. I was playing against a team 
uh, at the time. We were down in uh, Boca Raton, and we were playing against a team. And, and uh, uh, at the end of the day, the uh, the pitcher that was on the mound was uh, the first pick of the draft. And and wow. uh, and it was, it was Scott Casimir was was the pitcher. And I I remember sitting there and. We 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 had the privilege of playing his team twice and and matched up against him twice and I remember the first game I just I couldn't I just couldn't connect with the ball he had me just racked and I was done crazy and I got out of that game and it was at some moment the two instances tied themselves together and I could remember back to when how I felt finally over. Uh, being being able to overtake my brother right to be able to beat him at stuff and the feeling that it had and i don't know what it was that came over me it was a, like a spirit or well, i don't know it was a wave yeah and, uh, and i ended up going four for four with a home run and two doubles the the following game and it's fucking I, sick yeah and i remember that game probably over any other game that i've ever had in my life uh in the sporting world i have other, other you know obviously other things that are way more important to me than sports now i look mm -hmm. back at sports as a good learning ground a uh, it's it's where the training wheels uh are put on and and hopefully can come, come off. off as well that's right yeah yep. Yep. So I think all of us that played sports at a high level that didn't maybe meet where we were eventually hoping to go for whatever reasons, whether it be a skill gap or outside circumstances. Sure. And here's the thing I, I grappled with later in life that I that finally liberated me in full. And I'd say I was probably at 20, 26, 27 years old. It finally occurred to me, OK, so you were going to get drafted. That means absolutely nothing about the success you may or may not have had when you right. got to the next place. It, I could have been a complete failure, mm -hmm. absolute failure, and just drowned out. Would that have been worse? Did, did something pull me from this experience before I had the opportunity to achieve that level of failure? Right. Because they thought that this would have been the, the way that I can learn and, and be the best me that I can. So. You know, I'm a I'm a big believer in the world puts you in positions to to grow, to learn, to succeed, and it's Great. your job as a human to to accept that responsibility and to to walk that path. You know, which isn't easy right. because left to our own devices, Ben. I mean, I want to sit on the couch. I want to want to you know be negative about things. I want to totally. think that the world is against me when times are tough. I just don't entertain those things anymore at this point in my life. That's a beautiful thing, man. I mean, and it's led you to the spot now where you are, you're, you're kind of a, you're the success story. You're a family man. You have a family now. I do. How I many have, children uh, do you have? I have, uh, I have four kids, 10 and under. So I have a nine-year-old, uh, Dean. I have a uh, soon-to-be seven-year-old, Jax. And then I have twins, uh, Carly and Ronan, that are five. Holy cow. This just, And this just must be the, the highlight uh, of your life now, this family that you're the head of. Yeah. So... For all the successes, and I, I've shared this with people at, uh, you know, at, at uh, you know, I'll go to go to a meeting and, and you know, try to try to speak. And, um, you know, I won't call them motivational, but business. And I, I share with people all the time. My greatest success in my life is my family, period. Yeah. Um, there if I came home to an empty house, nothing that I have would be worth a thing. It would be completely irrelevant to me and it, and it goes and, back to this idea that like we i feel like as human beings we're so inclined to look back at other paths that we could have taken or forks in the road where we went left and we wonder what would have happened if we went right and it's like you know okay what if you what if you had been drafted and you had a career in the and the other circumstances that you would have to uh, you know, surrender as being changed as a result of, you know, spending so much time wanting, you know, this, uh, this other path. And I think I'm guilty of that. Uh, also, I, I spend too much time and, and, you know, when you got still, when we got our stuff, when you deal with the shades of depression, there might be, you know, the tendency to, to think about those things more so. Um, but one of the things that you said earlier struck me because it's a point that I'm at, you know, in my relatively young adult life, you said that the 
having to change like what you thought about your identity from this baseball player that was going to be drafted and you kind of had to like reform yourself and re remake yourself in a lot of ways and i i felt that i sympathize with that because you know i i've i've told you i've told the channel about you know kind of my my football into uh you know personal training uh, always a very physical expression of, of myself and in, in whatever i was doing and you know whatever i was about and now at a spot where um i i have to make a similar pivot that you had to make in you know refinding myself and re-identifying myself in some ways because i'm not a physical person well i'm physical in different ways now and uh and and so i sympathize with that and it seems like that's a path that you've walked and i looking at you now it seems almost like you're on the other side of it successfully to to me you know non-specifically or you know just somebody who is left at a turning point, like, would you have any advice as a as a success story of, OK, now I need to reset and refigure out what's important to me um, as a guy who's made it happen for himself? You know, where should I or, you know, somebody else look first inward, outward, retrace old steps, look forward to new directions? Uh, you're a success story of it. What do you think? Inward. Uh, but but I think the. Um... I think the most important thing for me was I, I struggled and what kept me in the box, I'd say, for so long was that I didn't realize I could have both. I could have what was and what is, and they That's can huge. live together mutually, right? They can be the same thing. I can, I can celebrate what I once had and that be okay knowing that I don't have it now. And for so long, there was a resentment. There was this, there was this, this, this happened to me mentality. Bro, and that, honestly, keep it totally real, not to interrupt you. That's exactly the spot that I personally am at still right now. Like, and I'm like working through with my psychiatrist and, you know, like Emily and in conversation with friends, like conversation with, with guys like you, but like, I, I'm still, I haven't, I haven't gotten over the hump of like, it still makes me so fucking angry because it's, it's like, it feels like it happened to me. And like, you know, it, that things were taken from me that like, that I didn't want to give up. So it's like, yeah, I feel so much anger for it still. So I'm sure. glad to hear, I guess that there's a next phase, but uh, you know, you feel, I feel stuck in some ways about it still. The phase, the phase in all honesty, Fen is acceptance. Right. In life, sometimes we get to a point and things are the way that they are. And it's our 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 chance, our opportunity to accept what has been and what could be. And so for me, during that time when I was having this reckoning, you know, and it's so it's so small to put it into words because and I know that you can you can relate to this because uh, and many, I know people, I know people in the chat personally that I've had conversations with that, have, that, you know, know this the depression and regret and, um, feeling like something was taken from you is not something that can be put down as me just saying it to you. And that explains what internally it does to my everything, my whole being, right. it's not just my brain. It's not just my body. It's me. It's the composition from from top to bottom. And so, you know, I always allude to the Uncle Rico, right? The Napoleon Dynamite Uncle Rico, right? Mm -hmm. I can still be Uncle Rico, right? I can still throw the football over that mountain fence yeah. <laughs> in the back of my head. But I know that my old, now, you know, overweight ass can't do that anymore. And that's yeah. okay. It is completely fine. You know, one of the things that hurts me the most, and I still, even today, as good as I got, and I still desperately wish I had more tape on myself when I was younger. Sure. I, I mean, just I just wish that I did, but we, we didn't have cell phones like that. We had, you know, we had no a kids that were, you know, we had no kids, but you didn't take pictures on them. And right. nobody was bringing their camcorder to my games on a daily basis. And the ones that were, were all trash because it's so far down the line that my baseball career is a hair on the nutsack of the world. It's irrelevant. It <laughs> right, sure. Nothing. You know, so I have to, when I, when I finally realized how unimportant I really was in the grand scheme of things is when I was finally able to accept the fact that, okay, I, I had a great run. 
you know, I can celebrate that great run, but it's time now for me to make another run. Yeah. It's time for me to throw on my goddamn boots and grind this thing down. It's it's no different than streaming. You know, I had no interest in streaming. I, I was I was around the Twitch community for almost two years. You know this. I was in your. I mean, if we look at my followers, I was there right from the start of your. Oh yeah, early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and I was there with with everybody. You know, I I wouldn't. I wasn't. I've never been a huge chatter. Right. I'm the, I'm the watcher. I'm the weirdo. Mm -hmm. I guess you call it. Like I just like watching the entertainment. And we yeah. put it to the test every once in a while. I'll just call Fritzy randomly to the front of the congregation. I haven't, I haven't heard from him in an hour and a half. You're like, hey, hey Fritzy, you here? He's like, yeah, what's up? All right, all right, what up, dude? I was just checking. Uh, I was just checking in. <laughs> uh, and and I, I enjoyed uh, the content. And my wife was actually the one who was like, listen, you have this funny, goofy, fun side. And she's seen me in those circumstances. She said, why don't you stream? And I was like, ah, because I don't, you know, it was never about financial or anything like sure. that. I just, um, and she said, well, maybe it'll be fun. So when we were at the end of COVID, I'm like, I don't get to see my friends very often. I enjoy all the people that I'm hanging out with on here. Why not just boot it up and give it a shot? Whatever. And then five months later, I end up here, you know, here and it's like just just by not not stopping, I guess. I mean, I I. I the community has been so darn good to me, Fend, and I, I just never really expected to be accepted. I know that uh, you know there was there's somewhat factions, if you may, and and uh, you know gameplay guys, pack guys, you know different types of content. You know my content isn't the same as a lot of people's. Um, it was amazing to me that I was able to do what I I I'm a good Madden player, but I, it's amazing that I'm able to just boot up and open packs, which I love to do. It right. makes me so happy and people show up to watch it, you know, and it's been it's been wild in that regard. So I, I can't I mean, believe that I ended up there and we beat it to death. But I mean, it's the it's a true fact that people are not showing up for uh, almost any of what's going on on the screen more so than they are checking into, you know, the, the Fritzy's chat and saying hello to everyone who's there and, you know, engaging with you and the energy and like, that's just so, so on the note then of the channel, I know you're kind of like moving out of a golden ticket. Like we're like, we're getting, we're almost at Madden 22, right? I know you played MLB for a little bit um, the other day, but what are your, what's the direction of the channel for now? Are you going to, is it going to be both feet into 22? Will you stay the focus on, um, you know, the, the marbles to giveaways bounce? And back and forth, you have other plans. Like, what's uh, what's our moves coming up? What can we expect from you over the next few months or so? So, I, I don't make any bones about it. I tell it to my own chat. So, we'll we'll just go ahead and share it here too. Yeah, yeah. When the game comes out, I am a get all the packs, open them all. <laughs> Definitely not not a uh, an NMS, bro. I'm a, right, I'm, right, a right. I'm, <laughs> I'm an all money spent. Okay, <laughs> so, you got uh, it, man. Ain't no shame in that. If you want to see a lot of packs open <laughs> that you might not want to buy yourself, you know where to go. Um, I'll be there for that. I'm like, I don't got it. <laughs> so so kind of the way that I started was there was a lot of that uh, because there was still content to be had when I started in January, mm -hmm. um, and. I love I love the buying packs and opening stuff up. I I it's prided fun. myself on getting all of the limiteds up until even the TVP pack. I had at least oh, wow. pulled the limited from the legends and from the limited every week. That's actually the, nuts. That's actually so yeah. many limiteds. Yeah, that's oh, how man. I got tagged with this name of uh, glitchy and and pack god. And here's the thing: I know I come off as Rob Gronkowski on stream, right? Like, a bit. yeah, yeah. Yeah, just the just the dumb jock or whatever. But uh, <laughs> I'm just having fun, you know. It's just it's two hours where I uh, I have nobody else around. I can just throw it up in the air. I don't mm -hmm. drink. I don't smoke. I don't mm -hmm. do any recreational anything. You know, it's a time for me to let loose. And I know it's not for everybody, and that's completely okay. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, you you yell too much. You, that's fine. You don't have to be here. I'm not mad at you, you know. Different strokes uh, for but, different folks. That's okay. Yep, yeah, yeah, but this is two hours where I'm just going to be 
the steroided extra extra version of myself but what i boot down and i'm you know or i'm here and i'm having a conversation with you there's a whole different side to me you know there's and it does seem like more. i think one of the one one of the very many appealing parts uh, about you as a streamer and you as a dude is that you know you get the feeling that you are indeed just getting fritzy just maybe on you know uh volume 11 rather than yeah. eight uh, for example but uh i i would be i would be curious to see you know fritzy uh, uh papa fritzy in the house like I feel like you'd be just a big mushy teddy bear for somebody's for somebody's for somebody's kids I am I am I, you know I think if you know for the people that had a chance to hang out in my subathon um you know when I had my kids on I had my yeah. son playing Fortnite on there and you know doing his thing um it's my favorite thing right you know it's so that, yeah. It's if I could choose, if I was able to have one thing in life, it'd be to hang out with just hang out with the kids. You know, every weekend totally. uh, we build it or I put up the it's like a 20 by 20 um, water park bounce house and to watch my kids f fly up the slide and fly down the slide and just for whatever Joy. reason. Yeah, it's it's more than that. It's. It's rekindles my spirit because when I was young, I'm able to, and I don't, I think everybody can do this. I don't know, but I'm able to mentally go back to those summer days when I yeah. was a kid yeah. and that feeling of being out there with friends or my brother and just, just how beautifully great and simplistic the world is at yeah. that age. And you can learn so much from that freedom of, of the mind. And so it, yeah, I mean that's. I think that 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 is definitely a side that I have not been able to share with uh, with Twitch, other than in those brief moments. But you know, certain things in life are, are also personal, and not to say that that's sure. a super personal thing. But, but you know, still. I don't want I don't want my kids to feel like that they're. Um, I don't want them to grow up and feel like they were used as a tool on my channel. If that makes sense to you, right. uh, I'm bringing Dean on. Come check. That's not, no, you know, I, I, I'm not that guy. Uh, if, if he wants to come down and say hi, he knows that he's allowed to come down and say hi, and I'm more than happy to have him here. Sure. But uh, I'm definitely not going to put him on stream and, and show that type of stuff unless it's something that he's asked for. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, and unfortunately, like you kind of have to assume the like the worst of the internet too, and just like, and I'm like still learning that a little bit, and uh, you know, because we, we tend to be open guys because I, I you know, I feel like that's what what else can you be uh but but you know that that makes sense when did you uh when did you you said you're a good madden player i know you played did you play skimbo on his stream i did that's it, kind it, of you were close it was a close game was it not yeah so that's kind of how people found out about me after that stream i got like i went from like 100 followers to like 500 and Skimbo was streamed at the same time that I did, and my defense was just driving him absolutely nuts. Uh, he couldn't dope. move the ball on my D. He scored. I lost fourteen to seven, and one of his touchdowns was on a pick six. And uh, I was running a cover six, but I was adjusting every single person because, fortunately for me, I had watched Skimbo stream. I knew exactly right. what he was going to do. What he wanted to do, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> the scouting report was in. That's dope. Yeah. So I, I always tell people, would he have scored more points? No, I, I think I could have adjusted to his offense. I'm a very good defensive player where sometimes I have issues is if my offensive game plan doesn't work, like yours, yeah, right? right. It, it's very tough for me to like <laughs> migrate into a different sphere. I don't run the ball. I'm a passer, man. Right, so right. If, you, if you have the bag for me and my stuff, then it's pretty much a wrap. Like, I just have to hope to, to get an interception or to force a fumble, and I might score seven and you score 14, but I don't, I never really give up much points. I'm typically like an 18 to 20 wins. I had a couple of, uh, I had a couple of weeks with 21. Um, oh, yeah, that's on, very competitive. So, all on current gen, though. So, it's, I mean, there's some demons out there, but I, it's an above average player. You know, it's not like I'm a 15 or 13 win guy. I just... Here's my problem. I can be up 21 points and I'm still yelling at the game. Yeah, right. <laughs> you, know, you can never take the deep exhale and be like, "All right, I think I got this." So you right. gotta stay tuned up the whole time. <laughs> it's crazy. And then, and then I question myself because of my brain. It's, uh, do people hate seeing this? Do they love seeing this? Is this good content? Is this bad content? And before you know it, I haven't talked for 20 seconds, and right. I'm like, "Oh yeah, by the way, you know." So 
I, well, the Skimbo game, the Skimbo game was a huge dub for the channel. Now, so, so keep it real with me. Uh, this was this was a, a smart move, was it not? Maybe. Come on, come on, Fritzy. Come on, come on. It, you can, come on, let's be. If we're gonna talk about Ever. it. Let's talk about it. I see. Never, I see with wi eyes wide open. This was a smart ass fucking move. Uh, every everything that I do has some sort of meaning behind it. I know. Um, I don't. I don't just do things to do them. I learned very, I'm not going to say very young, but when I went through a lot of this stuff, everything you do has to have a purpose, Yeah. right? So, you know, I, I remember very specifically going to CeCe's chat um, and CC knows who I am, mm -hmm. but a, a couple of my people were in there because it's shared content, right? He's a yeah, bad right. guy as well. You see the people around, Madden. right? Yeah, he's a great Madden player as well, yeah. um, but he does that same sort of content and there's people in the chat that are in my chat all the time and they're like have a pack war with Fritzy and I specifically typed out in the chat it serves CC absolutely no benefit with my 2000 followers to do a pack war with me what does he stand to gain from this this endeavor none all of that people are already here so mm -hmm. <laughs> there, there's no value added and I think right. that um I've always realized that there is you have to have a reason to that you can offer up to say here is what i can help you with you know can you give me some assistance as well right sure. and to not trek down that road before it's warranted and, and what you're doing right now is a great example of it it's why and i've told you on and well there's some stuff i won't say but i've told you how much respect i have for you in the way that your brain's working and the content that you're trying to produce because that feels good. While you are that. providing great content right now, right? This is also very beneficial for you. And they know it as well, like myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Coming onto your show at this point is going to be very beneficial for them as well because of the community that you built from the ground up. So um, awesome. that's that value added that we talk about, right? And so I've just known from the beginning that, that everything is a value. We're in a value added society. You have got to either be willing to trade your time, your community. You have to trade something mm -hmm. if you want that same sort of thing reciprocated or the exposure of said event. So in Skimbo's case, it was $50. Yeah. It was Skimbo knew he was going to beat me. Yeah. And I I surprised him. I yeah, right, I by giving him a game. Yeah, right. Yeah, he was, he was telling his chat. He had people coming over saying, you got this dude so pissed right now he doesn't know what to do and, <laughs> and i i knew because i prepped for that game so i could get that exact response from the people in his chat An and, orchestrated moment man this is so fucking yeah. smart dude that's so yeah. fucking smart so, if i had just showed up and played the game it probably would have done nothing for me but i knew that if i could give him fits offensively because he's the best offensive player arguably to ever play in madden right then I, you know maybe and, and what's my worst case scenario, Fen? I threw a fifty dollar bill at a friend. Right. You, know, yeah. you wanted to support him anyway. That's dope. Yeah. He got to play. You know, you you got some time on his stream. Yeah, I think that's I think yeah. that's smart. So so did you then like do you kind of like kind of have a, a decent relationship with Skimbo since then? Because that's pretty fucking yeah. dope. Yeah, I do. I, I mean, I, you know, uh, I have a pretty decent relationship with uh, with W as well. I mean, the other yeah. day during my twenty four hour, W decided to send uh, his channel over to mine during the middle of the night. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. So yeah, hell yeah. Uh, I've tried, you know, I try to make sure that I cultivate relationships. Not, I never, I'm never chasing for the big ones per se. Right. Because I think the biggest mistake that people make when they go to build their channel is they assume they can come to, and you see it every day. You're a streamer, you know, you get, you need enough people in your room that this is going to resonate with you. You'll yeah. see a guy come in and say, Oh, I'm live. You talked about it with dev yesterday. Oh, I'm right. live. Right. Dude. Nobody here cares that you're yeah, live. Don't give no, a fuck. You know who might care that you're live? The other guy that's sitting in his room by himself. And he might care that you're live. And you might care that 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 he's like, go build yourself something, right? Sure like start from the bottom and maybe you will you know you will grow something organically from the bottom to create a, a community of your own. Because most people don't realize that. Fenler also had 10 people in, Fenler had seven people in the chat, all which were friends for mm -hmm. a CFM thing. And right. this thing blew up from there. 
but it all started with a small group that was cultivated and that's what people don't realize yeah i think uh yeah i tend to agree i want to hear about uh so okay i think we can expand from here on the topic of of kind of like growing your stream via networking because you know people are going to be fascinated with how it is that you wound up with like you said probably close to 100 average within five months to make it happen but i think i think talking about rage is like a is a decent segue do you remember yeah. one of the, like either you're the favorite raid that you've ever gotten like the easy answer for me is always like dub and dubby uh reminded me of this the when he came in with like 800 people after a big madden tournament i'm fucking shit wasted i meet a bunch of good people that are in the channel you know to this day did you have any like uh any big raid moments like on the come up that you remember that uh that kind of stuck with you yeah, the the two, two that I can remember and I will never forget. Duh. One was Buffalo K, D Grizzle, Rhino, and Lauren were all streaming a Madden event. And they mm -hmm. all had, you know, varying between 80 and in Buffalo's case, like 300 people in the room. Right. And they decided, because I've, I've been in K's chat all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I love Buffalo K. I mean, I hung out with him all the time. I yeah, he's done. Shout out to Buffalo K. We love Buffalo K. Yeah, and I've talked to him on a personal level at this point. You know, he's mm -hmm. a friend of mine. And Yeah, good dude. Him, he orchestrated all of them raiding me at the same time. I wasn't even affiliate yet. Really? And, yeah, I got D Grizzle raid, Rhino raid, Lauren raid, Buffalo K raid. These are all just bam, bam, bam. That's fucking sick. Kid. This is insane. Nuts. And then two weeks later, I was already affiliated at this point and zero expectations that it was going to happen. Yimmy's got the last one of the day and he rated me with like 600 people. And that was just quantity wise. That was crazy. I won't forget that. I was, it was so early uh, in the channel that I had never, I had never been exposed to that many people at one time, you know? Right. Your first one. Yeah. The first, like, I think one of the, I think the first secondhand Madden live raid I got was from D Grizzle. Uh, also all the, yeah, all these like, OG. do you have a favorite raid that you've sent? Maybe somebody knew that you came oh. across or even just a dope fucking reaction by someone like uh, my gotta love. I love raiding rowdy time. That's always a dub. Nico Cinco guys like Dino is always going to give you your money's worth. Uh, I mean, I could keep going on and on. I don't want to. I don't want to list and miss anybody. But do you have? A, do you? Do you remember like the favorite raid recipient that you've ever shipped? Uh, there was two. One uh -huh. I sent to. Uh, is it okay to share his name on here? I uh, yeah I, yeah. Okay. Uh, small streamer named the Gamer Division and and. Oh uh, hell yeah we, yeah yeah. Yeah, we shipped over a raid to him. I think at the time I wasn't as big as I am now. It was maybe 65, 70 people. And he had Stage. never had he had never had ten people in the chat before, and we started a level five hype train in there, and um, I think at like four or five hundred percent, I may or may not have contributed heavily. Uh, to that. Yeah, you do that every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, you know, and uh, and he started crying and uh, with just tears of joy, and and was explaining how that's never happened to him before. Nobody's ever done something for him like that. And I went in there; it was random. He had come into my chat and said hello. And I, I typically, I don't say it out loud most of the time, but I'll, I'll drop a, a follow or go look and see if you're a streamer and what, maybe mm -hmm. what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this dude is streaming right now. He never told me he's streaming and he's in my chat talking. How many people are in his room? And I saw there was one and I'm like, we're going there. We're doing yeah. it. And yeah, yeah. it was amazing. The other guy that I don't care what day of the week it is that I love rating is clap. Facts. Oh man. Fact clap a showman. Dude, it, it's he, he he I don't know what it is, right? I know what he's gonna say, I know what he's gonna do, I know all the stuff. Right. And I still like it. <laughs> Dude, when he gets the microphone swinging, I can't. Yeah. I can't deal with that. It gets me every single time. And some yeah, of these right. scary uh, the scary boy games in the evenings? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> he was playing some game. I was in there for a. I it was. I think it was. At, I think it was. Uh, maybe late at late after the podcast night. Yeah. And I just had him on my phone. I'm walking around, and it, the the game was like it was like 
Your only flashlight was a camera, which is like the worst fucking case scenario of all time. So he's walking through this house. Anytime he wants to see around a dark corner, he takes a picture. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to listen to him play this. Every five minutes or so, I hear you fucking <laughs> screaming, running away from the thing. That's got to be some of the best entertainment out. Who are you really enjoying right now as far as like streams? Clap is a, uh, I spent a lot of time in Clap stream, loving that. Who else are you really enjoying? Uh, what they got going on right now when you, you know, I know your family yeah. man and you got to moderate the time you spend but uh, what, what kind of shows are you enjoying right now out on here on Twitch my I, well I have different time slots you know I'm always in your stream I think as you know I like I love, yeah, I love that here. I, That's a I love hanging out with JB's in the morning JB's in the party. morning has been dope too yeah. up in Adam of course when we get him in AM yeah, Adam um my morning is pretty set amongst the group of about four or five. And what it's funny because I'll have them all up and I'll be like, so I have my headphones set. I have two uh, outputs in my okay. computer. So I literally have a person in one ear and a person in the other, which <laughs> will probably drive most people nuts. But I don't know if I can I handle that. It's it, for whatever reason, it's relaxing to me because normally it's Jay and Spicy screaming happiness in my left ear. Oh and my then, god, the coffin dance is fucking yes. comedic, actual genius, bro. Yeah. I watch my channel. I have never tracked my channel points like I do for the JB's and Spicy coffin dance ever. I'm in there waiting for that thing to go green, spamming it, fucking spamming it, waiting for it, waiting for it. Man, I'm subbed up, spamming it. I have never felt so strongly about channel points as I do for that coffin dance, man. I cannot wait. So JB's, J Dub, of course, uh, got to get some rotation, yeah. but go on. Sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, yeah, I loved. Here's the problem with me because I was a viewer for so long. Mm -hmm. There is so many people that I actually like to watch, man. For I sure. wasn't a streamer, and yeah. keep in mind, like people see, I oh yeah, it's a check mark. Oh blah blah blah. In my mind, I am still a Twitch viewer, right? right? Like people say, oh, it will look at him, you know, drop subs here and bits. Dude, I was doing this long before mm -hmm. I ever put myself on camera for me it's a sign of hey i really enjoy your content man here's something for your time to show you that your time is valuable thank you for providing me with this today this was a great hour two hours of my life i don't go to the movie theater and get in for free right. so right right it's I a good way to put it and twitch is a unique platform and nobody has to spend a dollar mm -hmm. but it's my job in for, in my mind right if Jay and Spicy are doing awesome things and nobody's putting doing, on a show I here. Pay the admission. I gotta yeah. pay the admission tickets for the 17 people that are there yeah, that may awesome. or may not, you know, it might not be for any reason they can't, you know, their financials don't work out for it, whatever. Mm -hmm. There's no pressure. Right. I'm not saying that. But if I can do it, I'm gonna do it. And that's why I do it because it's it's like, hey, somebody's gotta show this man some love. Look, look at what he's putting out there. Look at the content. Look at you know, all the work that they're putting into this, you know, and I just, for me, it makes me feel good. I know that financially it helps, you know, whoever it is that I'm, that I'm donating that to. For sure. And uh, thankfully I'm in a position that I'm able to do so, you know? And that's such a beautiful thing, man. And that's obvious. And that's obviously like when it goes right. You know what I mean? That's when, that's when support goes right. When it's coming from a place of this, this is a show that I feel is valuable in that they've added value to my life over this, like you said, hour, two hours, three hours. I feel comfortable paying for my entertainment. You know what I mean? There's also also, and we don't need we don't need to go full uh, we're not gonna go we're not cut for that we don't need to go full TMZ on this thing here but I think that we also both you know have shared a recent experience where the the toxic like more dark side of support for support or follow for follow and where some of these where where some of these ideas can go wrong and they can kind of like get poisoned and and next thing you know you're in a spot where it's like you don't you don't recognize it as much like I you've you've uh, adapted and adjusted uh as of sure. late do you have anything non-specific again high level because we're not playing in no, no mud like high level things that you've learned recently from you know the stuff that we've had to navigate together and really as a community it's not it's not unfair to say yeah i think listen i i'm not one to tell people what to do right mm -hmm. ultimately if you want to do what you want to do and you know it might not be for me um 
my my issue with supports for support slash follow follow is when you create these things about 99 percent of your interactions from what i've been able to see from the outside is uh what can you do for me people right. aren't showing up there to help each other they're showing up there to help themselves right. and uh, it almost rubs me as the most selfish of communities uh, and, it's su and that's such a fucking parrot and i completely agree uh, which uh, for me kind of adds to the frustration uh, of the like kind of like built in hypocrisy because in a lot of instances you're not getting involved with a situation like this to further to you know to a, a, a phrase that we used earlier your service to others it, it's for the one the ones that you can re, you know get back to you you know what I mean like you're gonna unfollow X Y and Z after you make sure they locked in theirs and you could keep it moving I think maybe a and this is not Fritzy saying this, this is me saying this I think sometimes it absolves people of their responsibility to conduct a show and be good and actually be good at what they're doing because it doesn't matter. Um, the, you know, the support for support, follow for follow thing is predicated just on that transaction of goods right there and, and nothing further. So, you know, it's refreshing to hear from somebody like you who operates in their mindset of support and service to others from a standpoint of I got no I got no issue paying for my entertainment and you know showing love in this way rather than and I never got the you know impression from you certainly you know it's also used as social currency to okay I, I in some instances think that I have now paid for you to be in my stream or do the same thing in my channel and you know a trade of goods that becomes self-servient from that's, the outset you know what i mean that's where the problem that's okay so that's where the problem exists right me okay i'll give you an example i may show up to, and we'll use me and you i yeah, may sure, show yeah. up to your stream for 38 million times longer than you do mine it doesn't matter what the number is right mm -hmm. because i come in here and do that does not deem you responsible to come in and hang out with me I, I think I've given you a hundred and some subs right over yeah, the time legendary. that I've been a fan of yours and, and enjoyed your content. It's amazing. I don't need you. I don't want and I don't expect, right? That is not how this thing works, right? What is given should be given from a place of giving. It should not be given it from a place of expecting back. And and we won't share it because I don't think it's with tact that we would do so. Oh, yes, but I've shared with you my, my uh, experience um, in certain areas slash aspects that um, led to some resentments for me, you know, yeah. um, with with certain individuals and expectations, you know. I know it's one of my biggest fears sometimes, right? You come to my channel, you 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 drop subs in my channel, and then are you doing that because you've seen that I support some other streamers and you're looking for me to come in and do something for you because that. I only give money to the people who I enjoy watching other than a few experiences that I've had on Twitch where that, you know, there was a reason there was rhyme initially that just was literally left completely unchecked. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it concerns me. And I know, you know, I think it's why um, it's why I navigate completely differently right now. And I noticed the extra pressure uh, when I got a check mark, the extra emphasis on certain things from from individuals sure that you know for me i woke up and sure it was a great accomplishment but it it felt as if it held a weight that i wasn't really looking to attach to myself if that makes sense uh i enjoyed where i was at and what i'm doing and i'm very grateful to have gotten it you know especially in the speed that i did but the initial week was very tough for me a lot of things changed Yeah, it's good stuff, Fritzy. Hold on. I yeah, did he be Fritzy, can you still hear me? Okay, I think I uh had to switch headphones. My Bluetooth dropped, so I might have to, uh, yeah, I think the chat might need another like 30 like a 30 second rewind from you. Hold on a second there. Sorry, guys. Yo, my that's very interesting. So stream, yeah, I know. Fen is good, Fritzy is muted. Yeah, I'm just waiting. My Streamlabs has been doing this very exciting thing. Uh okay, I'm back. 
we're good. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, hold on. I just got to recapture my uh, desktop sound for you. My Streamlabs has been uh, pretty fucking sketchy these last few days. Son of a bitch, bro. I know. Yeah, right. We couldn't get the whole. We couldn't get the whole thing all squared away. Oh man, why is that running so slow? Okay, wait. Hold on, guys. We got it. 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 Yikes! Very sketchy. Very very sketchy. Okay, Fritzy, can I get a check one too? You guys good? Everybody good? There we go. And now I got Fritzy on my sound my sound meter. You guys, uh, you guys all good there? He good? Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. So they look looks like they lost me at the responsibility of the uh, check mark. So yes, um, that's the la yeah that's the last thing that happened before my stuff. Appreciate you guys letting us know too. Sorry about that. Okay, amateur hour is never is never left, Coach Mud. Come on, it would just wouldn't be the same thing. Sorry, Fritzy. If, if before you were so rudely interrupted, brother, if you would proceed. Okay. Uh, I was just saying, you know, when you when I got the check mark in and I saw people change the na you know navigating through things change expectations may have changed. It wasn't everybody, uh, but there was people, and uh, it made it difficult for me. You know, I mm -hmm. felt even with people that I had grown uh, very close to on the platform, people that I'm in their chats, hanging with them at night and during the day. Um, you know, it was always just, "Hey, there's the check mark." Like, no, dude, I'm, I'm, and and this comes probably from my past, and mm -hmm. you know how I how I need to constantly humble myself so that I don't you know, over exceed or overshoot the boundaries. But it's like, dude, I'm just, I'm still the same old guy. I'm Fritz. Like, it, you know, we don't have to go and be weird about this, you know, like. Bro, but even like I, you telling me about, like, you know, like your reaction and, and um, I were similar in a lot of ways. This certainly one of them. It also, you know, it makes me feel strange. Like, you know, a guy that I've had extensive personal conversation with just my like my man fritzy popping on the show today like we're just gonna you know have a conversation like you know like like brothers do like it's a trip also for me like you know I, i've been doing this for a, a little longer than you all not all too much longer and it goes back to you know making an impression that you might not because like of course i don't see myself in any, any other way except you know console fend 2.0 like i'm still out here trying to fucking figure my stuff out it's still amateur hour we still got you know Streamlabs reminding me that i'm, I'm never going to be uh, you know as great as i as i think i am so it's a trip man and uh i think it's uh i think it bears remembering that you know people can be can can see you through different lenses and uh to always treat people well and you know to your point that keeps recurring here in be be in service to others but uh but yeah and i think in your instance you had to come combat a little bit of people treating you differently but not m maybe in like a maybe not even in a positive light like kind of like okay like you know time for your annie now you know what i mean like you're like, you're all square here like, we go oh well you know now that you're here where where we you know my turn right like, dude it, it literally been like 12 hours i i haven't even gone outside yeah, literally nice. haven't even walked out outside my own house since i got this this notification and i just felt like there was so much uh pressure and you know and it's just it, it was a tough thing to navigate but i got through it thankfully i have a lot of really good friends uh on the platform and yeah uh developing good strong relationships with others which has always been important to me and you know sometimes you outgrow mentally where you started and it's one of the toughest things that we have to do in life it's like outgrowing a relationship you know sure, yeah. you, you, you might have been way of doing things comfort yeah yep you might have been in love you might have had this great thing but you know at some point you grow apart because you've gone different directions or some person has grown and the other stayed in the mud or whatever it may be and uh you know just for me it was it was it was uh that was kind of the changing landscape that I was dealing with, but grateful as hell that I'm I'm where I am now with much more figured out. So yeah, man, you're looking yeah you're looking better than ever. When we first started our conversation, you alluded to you know partnership being dope, of course, like but and was part of the plan, but not necessarily the plan in and of itself. And I'm a big proponent of like I don't like to talk about much until I'm doing uh, the relevant things. You know what I mean? So uh, not in certainly in an effort to uh, to ask you about anything behind the scenes but what's part of like your bigger picture then like this I, I know if for if someone were to ask me I would have to answer honestly I'm making it up 
uh, as I go a little bit, just by nature of this thing being so unexpected and happening, you know, so relatively, uh, comparatively quickly to other things that, you know, th this has all happened for you in the, in half the time it took you to get any number of your th three plus associates, plus all the extra education you've gone through career changes, trainings. I mean, you know, you may well have had trainings that lasted longer than your streaming journey right now but as you're seeing this thing develop as you're getting a taste for your own potential and what you're enjoying about the the platform is this going to is this as big as it you want it to be as it needs to be is this serving a purpose of the you know community watering hole and it's in, in and this is good how it is now uh, what do you mean partnership is part of the plan but then but not the whole thing but, well, yeah. so what then uh, you know I, I, like I was sharing before if we stop right there right then 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 what are we doing mm -hmm. um yeah you know I, I I'm a new uh I'll be you know starting the YouTube channel I have a a very large campaign slash plan on how I'm going to grow that in a hurry as well and you know reached out to the pertinent people that could help me get there where i need to go but with you know the opportunity is there with how much i open and the monetary value that i put into it doing things that other people you know can't uh right. do which mm -hmm. thankfully i can and it you know it, it doesn't put me in any bind um i'd like to be able to provide that content so youtube's part of the growth but you know i I think more what I was talking to is, is I never have had ambitions to start streaming and be a person that, you know, gets partnered. That was never the thing. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it just like I've done everything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't I don't plan to forever be a Madden streamer. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's huge communities, huge communities where my comedic side, my entertainment side some of the other things that I know that I can provide that I'm a little bit limited on when it comes to Madden, which I love dearly and I will never stop streaming it, it you know, completely. Uh, but you know, if, if I could say the long term, you know, it, it's not forever from now that I'm, you know, in the just chatting sphere, uh, providing podcast comedy type content, um, and, and really trying to, to put the wheels under this thing and make it go fast as Ricky Bobby said, you know? That's what I'm talking about, man. I mean, all the tools are in place. Like you said, you got the, I mean, the character, the, the, you are to your own advantage, man. I think it's, uh, I can't wait to see it. I think that's going to be dope. Fritzy, man, we, so we have, I said, give or take like an hour. We're at like an hour 20. That like feels like pretty close to a sweet spot. I know we got you in business casual attire and, and you know, you got business to attend to for the rest of the day. I'm wondering if you, bro, so we've, I mean, we've covered everything from from the jump really some of your earliest transformative experiences with you know baseball having to reshape your identity numerous times turning yourself into you know uh less of a draft prospect in your eyes and now more a a family man a, a father of four the you know the at the helm of this community that has sprung up in five months that after you know getting to hear a bit more of your story is far less surprising uh you know e even e even less surprising than i knew it already was it's kind of just a continuation of your style and how you uh attack things and attack your life and i think you know uh that is valuable as a consumer of someone just listening to you talk uh that's extremely valuable one of you know the numerous reasons i'm very grateful that uh you took a bit of time to talk to us today man like i said it was going to be free mental jewels top to bottom uh and it was dope man is there anything brother i mean we got the good direction on the channel too is there anything that you would like to leave uh the congregation with any bits that we didn't get to discuss or go over uh before it's uh back on for the work day there handsome no i think most importantly just express my appreciation uh you know for for yourself for the first of all for the opportunity you know to come oh, on dude, here you know it's truly my pleasure here. I got to say this. It's like I see this list of all these people that I, you know, and I even said this to you in DMs. I'm like, I feel so out of place inside of this this spectrum of J Dub behind me, Strong disagreement, in front of me, yeah. trumpet monkey, and like, it's like, dude, this this is where we're actually at, you know. And uh, 
I, I don't know that um, I don't know that I'll ever kind of grasp that point, but my gratitude for the way that it that it has gone and where I'm at today and the relationships I'm building, plus what I got cooking up in the kitchen right now. Mm. Um, oh, we you got know, something. We got we got a little something, you know, cooking up in the kitchen, you know. Mm. So I think I think uh, you know, uh, come <laughs> hang out, you know, with the two of us on Saturday and let let's see let's see what the bacon grease yields, but. Uh, um i've had a great time with you man and you know uh i appreciate your time more than you know as well uh and and i hope that the the talks continue to get bigger and bigger your the future for you is mighty bright my uh as we might say as well oh man i don't think there's a ceiling for us fritzy man it's been a pleasure and it is what a, what a trip it is to kind of be you know you could say like rubbing shoulders with some of these people that you know we we experienced as viewers at first but i mean it just goes to show the closeness and connectedness of you know all of us you could see x y and z people as you know on a different on a different tier like i can't believe you know they would be in the channel and i'm feeling so much of that now also but um you know a strength that you've been able to capitalize your entire life and and i try to do the same is uh is being a master of communicating with people but not you know i'm not just not just linguistically not just your lexicon i'm talking about you know talking to people on different and deeper levels and i think that's one of the very many things that you succeed at i think it's one of the very many reasons that you have been and will continue to be successful and uh you are a showman fritzy an honor brother and a privilege to have you live this morning man your time is extremely valuable and i'm very grateful to you Okay. Appreciate you having me on, brother. There he is. I've been looking for Fritzy this whole time, man. I've been fed. This has been Fritzy. Maintain intensity. Be better than your opponents. And we will see you tomorrow with J-Dub Fritzy, man. You're a champion and a legend. And thank you, brother. Thank you, brother.